afternoon, everyone. I'd say pleasure welcoming Dr. Sayyid Tehseen Raza for an interactive session on dialogue and conflict resolution. Sayyid Tehseen Raza is an assistant professor in the Department of Strategic and Security Studies, Faculty of International Relations, Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh. Previously, he taught at the Department of Political Science, Miranda House, University of Delhi. New Delhi, uh, the Department of Political Science and Center for Women's Studies, AMU Aligarh, an expert in international politics and security. He currently focuses on gender and security and has an interest in establishing and popularizing security and peace studies programs in India. His most recent work, The United States and Pakistan in the 21st Century, Geostrategy and Geopolitics in South Asia, which was published by Rutledge in 2021, has been quite well received in academic circles. Uh, you're welcome, Dr. Reza. Uh, you have up to two hours for this session, and you're welcome to conduct it however you like to. So over to you, sir. Yes. Uh, thank you, Bezat and uh, India Lok Foundation. I was going through the uh, details of the foundation and uh, Karsali saw some of the recordings and uh, India Log is uh, actually doing a very uh, good work, uh, particularly at a time like this, when mm -hmm. in every sense, the, the, the parameters and the indices on every front is quite low and increasingly getting low in every, every, every field and every front. And even during the time of the pandemic, you have uh, converted this to the online mode that speaks uh, volume about uh, the, 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 the good work you are doing and particularly emphasizing dialogue as a thing in the current times in the, in the age of uh, populist upsurge all over the world, not just in our country, but throughout the world. So indeed, uh, very good. And I'm really happy to and uh, feel delighted to and, 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 and I'm thankful that uh, you were kind enough to ask me to come for this session and uh, interact with uh, the students who the list which you have sent uh, they actually are from uh, various backgrounds and academic disciplines and some practitioners are also uh, some uh, 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 students are uh, some uh, uh, some candidates are also uh, apart from um, uh, uh, from other fields too not just from academia so that indeed is a very very good uh, 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 group to team to work with and have a decision uh, so the uh, thing which uh, I wanted to flag in very quickly uh, in this session is the potential of dialogue for conflict resolution. And uh, my original plan, uh, which I will, of course, uh, change as per the, uh, uh, the wishes of the participants, is actually first to understand the, 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 the concept of dialogue and conflict resolution and try to situate it in the, in the current milieu of the world, uh, where in a sort of uh, skepticism has arisen in uh, uh, the people in that quarters to which uh, uh, hitherto and earlier used to give a lot of importance to dialogue, to say that uh, increasingly uh, there, there has arisen a situation where the, the immense potential which dialogue as a tool, as a mechanism, uh, the, the, the liberatory potential which it had and the emancipatory uh, appeal it potent that actually has not been realized. And uh, uh, a series of defeats, a series of uh, uh, going back uh, on many of fronts, uh, which we see not just in our country in terms of uh, the dialogic form of uh, interaction not giving way to uh, some sort of solution and uh, in every sense a sort of a of a, of a, 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 a orthodoxy of thought is gaining ground and we just now saw that in forms of many of the laws which have been passed in our country and uh, uh, in the last term in uh, united states of america to the way uh, trump rose to occupy the position and uh, the manner in which the, 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 the American people had to, uh, had to, uh, to witness a sort of uh, 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 a situation in which there was this chaos even in the Washington. 
So in such a situation, how do we uh, situate the importance of dialogue? Why is it that at such a time, uh, we need to, or we should give importance to dialogue, or we should think that dialogue is still has the, the, the potential to make amend in the prevailing situation uh, of the world. Uh, so uh, the importance of dialogue, actually, uh, I will try to highlight from the various uh, 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 perspective. Uh, I'll also try to have the, 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 the uh, theoretical underpinning from uh, various disciplinary background, my own background, uh, international politics and security studies, sociology and psychology. Uh, but uh, uh, I will frame my uh, talk in uh, 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 general to understand language in a, in a language which is generally understood and not in a very, very, very uh, academic overtone because uh, I, I can see the uh, diversity of the group which is uh, here attending the, uh, the, the, the session. Uh, so, uh, and uh, of course, since uh, the, uh, I'm taking the last uh, part of the uh, syllabus which Bezat sent me, and that was conflict resolution in that. It was specifically written that uh, uh, we'll be discussing some of the case studies too, the, the, the positive uh, uh, things which have accrued as a result of dialogue and the uh, limitations of it, and uh, particularly the, uh, in, in terms of case studies. So what I'll do is, uh, I'll very cursorily also discuss the activities of uh, two of the organizations uh, which are working at the world level, uh, specifically uh, utilizing dialogue uh, to bring positivities in, positivities in the world and to bring uh, 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 betterment in the world and play their part in making the world a better place to live in through utilizing the ideas and concepts of uh, dialogue. Uh, so these two uh, international organizations, one is the uh, Nansen Dialogue Center, that's in Lillehammer Center, the Lillehammer, uh, Norway. Uh, and uh, the other is Sustained Dialogue Institute, that is in Washington. The uh, 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 Nansen Dialogue Center actually uh, was established in the aftermath of the Balkan Wars. And they have done a lot of work in uh, those countries, the Balkan. Uh, which uh, in the early 90s have actually seen a lot of, uh, has, has, has seen one of the worst uh, uh, escalations in every, every sense. And there is the, the, the animosity and hatred and, and all sorts of problems which we now see in, 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 in our uh, region of the world. So uh, Nansen Dialogue Center has done a lot of work in the Balkan countries, uh, the, the Balkan countries in the aftermath of the 1990s, and it is still continuing. It was formed in 1994. And the other in, uh, institute or organization is the Sustained Dialogue Institute, and that is uh, located in uh, uh, Washington, and that actually is doing works uh, at different level, at international level, at community level, and at college level. So three of the case studies of uh, uh, this, I'll, I'll be uh, just, uh, uh, that has been documented, which has been documented, and I'll just uh, uh, present it here. Uh, so why dialogue? Uh, since it's, it's a session on dialogue, and you have uh, been through this idea and concept of dialogue for a very long time, so uh, if uh, someone of you can help me in uh, underlining what actually dialogue is and what we understand by dialogue. So someone of you uh, may help me in, in, in uh, delineating things so that I'll, I'll move further. So anyone of you can volunteer. Bezad, are they, uh, uh, can you conduct uh, the session in this manner? Because generally yes. in, in the class also, I uh, because uh, it generally uh, gives a sort of a, uh, understanding that how the uh, candidates are uh, uh, taking this. So is it yeah, okay? No. Of course or it is. It should, be, it should not be in a monologic form. Yeah, yeah, it is Actually. preferred. No? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So if anyone of you can help me in, in understanding what dialogue is, what dialogue according to you is, not the definitional dialogue, but dialogue by you. Uh, I think uh, dialogue yeah, is something uh, that, you know, it just, it, it's not, it's not just about conversation. It's about 
coming to a terms where where both the opponents agreed to a certain uh, level that you know uh, it it's a valid it should be a valid uh, form that it will conclude it in the sense that both the parties agreed to a certain term whether but it's not uh, it's not conventional that whether whether what the terms what the parties will eventually agree or not but basically it's for a certain issue to resolve okay good but, uh, rodi you have actually uh, made my task easier by <laughs> telling you. me the things which uh, actually uh, i wanted to flag in the actual is the thing so uh, there is a need for us at the very outset to understand the difference between the various terms uh, because uh, sometimes uh, it's it's generally important for us to have the definitional clarity Uh, so that we will be able to 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 locate uh, the importance of the concept which we are underlining in a better manner so there are there are many a uh, things uh, uh, which is generally talked since we are attending a session on dialogue so the concept of dialogue needs to be clear otherwise generally dialogue is uh, is generally understood in in like ways terms generally people say the dialogue political talks negotiation mediations all things are the same debate all these things are the same and they, they, they generally generally people take this in 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 a similar note uh, but actually it's not so there are differences between dialogue and uh, 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 discussion and political talk and uh, 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 debate particularly and mediation and other process so in a sense maybe uh, this can be understood to be a sort of a, a, a complementary thing but in a sense dialogue is something different and we will just now see what somebody has also written in the chat box uh, that dialogue is understanding your partner's view not necessarily agreeing or sharing oh very uh, good nazgul yeah from kyrgyzstan okay very good nazgul dialogue is understanding your partner's view not necessarily agreeing and sharing opinions very good the not necessarily agreement and uh, sharing point is important and that actually is the essence of dialogue uh, so dialogue actually is something which is different from debates and discussion and political talk in the sense that the other things have some end for themselves pre uh, determined ends dialogue actually doesn't have pre determined ends the essence of dialogue is understanding the essence of dialogue the main idea of dialogue is to understand the thing is to learn the things is to appreciate the various dimensions of the existing realities related to the issue so unlike other things unlike uh, some political talk or debate where the intention or the purpose is to achieve some set target or some set goals here in dialogue the purpose is quite uh uh uh, 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 uh uh you can say uh, uh, well defined in the sense that there is no purpose so and during the course of dialogue the ideas which the preconceived notions which one have the uh, the, uh, uh, the the orthodoxy with which one continues uh dialogue actually intends the unlearning of those preconceived notion the preconceived ideas and the orthodoxy of the attitude so dialogue is in essence a process yeah there is uh, mr ravi dobe has written that putting aside the differences and coming up with a win win situation for the parties involved yes putting aside the differences ravi and a win win situation for the parties involved I'll, we'll, we will discuss on this about this win win situation what actually is a win win situation is uh, is a very uh, a difficult thing to achieve and uh, uh, we will discuss on the win win situation part of the this otherwise you are putting aside the differences and coming um, uh, up with an intention to uh, towards the solution as is what is uh, uh, dialogue intends for so uh, and the purpose of uh, 
the 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 dialogic uh, conversation actually is to give hope is to move away from the existing despondency is to create a sort of a platform from where the existing reality or the status quo should be changed there is an intention for the changing of the status quo but even if the status quo is not changing if you are in a dialogic form a, 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 a dialogic conversation and we are having dialogue and uh, the dialogue is not uh, uh, giving a way to any sort of moving away from the existing situation is still then dialogue needs to be continued and dialogue should not be ended this is the essence of dialogue so dialogue has to be continued for the purpose of just uh staying afloat till the time when uh, uh as a result of some trigger as a result of uh, uh, uh some uh, 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 some other uh, uh, positive things coming from the very dialogue things begin to change so the importance of uh, the difference between dialogue and other mode of thing is that uh, the discussion the debate uh, the mediation process and the like voice things that have if not they are not going to be successful or if they are not giving way to some sort of uh, positive uh, result then that is put to an end but the importance of dialogue lies in the fact that the dialogue even if it is not giving way to some sort of solution it continues and this is actually the importance where the dialogue uh remains one of the most important mechanism or tool to bring changes in the in the in the in in in, in the existing problematic situation of the world or uh, the various uh, differences or acrimony which is continuing um in the critical dialogue studies particularly this aspect of dialogue is highlighted and there is a scholar uh, by the name i i thought of not uh, making it quite academic but uh, i am tempted to use the name of this scholar oliver uh, rams botham oliver rams botham actually has come up with this idea of radical disagreement so sometimes it so happens that there are some disagreements which are quite radical and there is seems no way out so in such a situation if a dialogue form is going on so in a situation of during the time of a radical disagreement too what oliver uh, ramsbotham suggests is not to end the dialogue but to get involved in what he terms as a strategic engagement uh, generally i do this in my classes too so i am writing it here uh, though i know uh, you people are uh, 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 you know the uh, concepts and theories of dialogue better but still i am writing the name of the scholars and the basic concepts which uh, they have come up with in the chat box i hope it's okay uh, is this not okay bezad uh, should i continue this no no you can of course write it oh. yeah. so this okay. this concept of uh, by oliver rams uh, bottom in times of uh, radical disagreement there should be a strategic engagement meaning that the dialogue should continue dialogue must continue and this is in essence the creative potential the liberatory potential of dialogue uh, so uh, with this basic of uh, the dialogue we will go into the definition too uh, after some time uh, let us try to uh, situate uh, the current uh, goings of the world 
in terms of the failure of the dialogue process or uh, in terms of the failure of the political process or whatever has been the intention of the humanity uh, with the formation of various governments, world institute and organizations, the idea of bringing peace and prosperity and some sort of rule of law all over the world that actually has not been able to be achieved. And in, in terms of all the indices of development, in terms of uh, particularly uh, since 2010 uh, 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 onwards, you can say 2001 on, onwards after this war on terror thing, what has actually what actually has happened is that on the various parameters of development, we are on a backward slide. The amount of money being spent on making ourselves secure is increasing many fold. And the amount of, uh, we generally talk things in terms of money because uh, though uh, there are various sorts of efforts, but in, in general sense, all the sorts of efforts uh, can be understood in terms of the amount of money being spent on that. So in terms of the uh, spending of the world for securing itself against the problem of conflicts and violence, if we see the statistics by SIPRI or the other organizations which accounts for these things, even last year in 2020, the world is spending on military equipment, military development, securing uh, the different countries of the world for the purpose of securing of the different countries of the world. The spending of the world actually was, uh, uh, it was around, Two trillion dollar in 2020, and the irony is, 2020 witnessed the year of a global pandemic, and in that year of global pandemic, the statistics is quite. Uh, uh, it shows the uh, irony prevalent in the world. Uh, during that time in 2020, the global GDP shrank by uh, almost around 4.4 percent. The global GDP shrank by 4.4%, but the spending on part of the different governments of the world for so-called securing themselves by investing in armaments and development was actually uh, around 2 trillion, which was 2.6% more than the spending in the previous year, that is in 2019. So at a time when all over the world there is this problem of health, there is this problem of life, there is this problem of uh, uh, the very existence of humanity. The world's attention is towards securing itself in terms of increasing the uh, 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 investment in terms of increasing it at, at the world, overall world's armaments. Uh, another uh, very, uh, 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 we can say, uh, a problematic trend which we witness now is the problem of uh, the global commons in terms of, uh, for example, things like uh, uh, climate change. So climate change is, uh, uh, is again uh, going to be one of the most problematic thing and we are not even able to uh, realize the grave uh, the, the, the intensity which uh, it is going to have on the different countries of the world, particularly. Uh, in other terms also, if all the other, if we see the developmental index of any kind, in all those index, the world uh, is seeing a downward slide in terms of the democratic index, in terms of the peace index, in terms of any other index the world actually is on a serious downward, uh, uh, downward slide. And that downward is spiral is actually going to the abysmal level. In such a situation, uh, it seems that there is no way out. It looks that we are on a verge of collapse because even our elected governments whom we have elected, they are not able to listen the justified grievances of the people and the people have to go in for uh, protests and dharnas for a long time. And even things doesn't get noticed by the elected government. 
and the overall uh, uh, index on democracy shows that even this semblance of democracy is decreasing the world over and this decreasing uh, 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 democratic space could be understood from the fact that in the last survey uh, of the uh, democratic index uh, it shows that the number of full democracies are actually decreasing they they actually have uh, different categories of uh, democracies of the world they have categories uh, the, the, the democracies which lie in the danger area democracy which actually are not democracies so the countries which are actually falling from full democracy to partial democracy or dangerous space is actually increasing very very much in such a world situation there seems to be an end to the things there looks that it it it, it seems that uh, there is no way out uh, there is uh, no possibility of any sort of betterment or positivity in such a situation there is an idea there is a tool there is a mechanism which provides a semblance of hope which acts as a sort of uh, a, a, a flickering light and that actually is not just uh, giving the idea of hope rather if we go into the details and try to understand uh, what we in uh, terms of strategic studies call we shift the strategic gaze if we shift the strategic gaze to that concept then we will see that it has the potential to bring changes in the existing despondency which the world now confronts and that is the concept of idea of mechanism of tool of dialogue so dialogue has the potential to instill hope in the hopeless humanity of now and how actually it has been utilized and how the different organizations are actually using the uh, the 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 tool and mechanism of dialogue to bring positivity in the world uh, we will see through the case studies of these three uh, these two uh, uh, organizations uh, which is working one in the nansen dialogue center and the uh, sustained uh, uh, conflict resolution initiative so uh, what i mean to say is what, what, what i try to underline now is that dialogue is not simply a concept which we need to study for the sake of studying and understanding rather dialogue as a concept as an idea has the potential to bring radical changes in the existing situation of the world and dialogue has actually achieved uh, uh, some uh, of the things in this direction as it has provided a sort of uh, uh, a, a, a combining a, 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 a tool a mechanism an idea where the uh, the 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 development of, on other fronts to have uh, taken positive lead from uh, so uh, before i move on to uh, the other uh, 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 aspect of my topic that is the conflict resolution and before going into the details of the conflict resolution let us uh, straight forward put some of uh, my assertion which uh, 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 relates to the potential of dialogue so i'll put four assertions and uh, the uh, next uh, section of my talk uh, will try to explain those assertions uh, so these four assertions are it pertains to dialogue that dialogue actually enables a shift in the very ground on which people stand transforming and expanding their sense of self and deepening their capacity to hear and inquire into perspective vastly different from their own so the idea of hope which i initially uh, associated uh, dialogue with that gets explained in this assertion that what dialogue does is is it enables a shift 
in the very ground on which people stands so the the the, the ground on which we try to analyze and understand thing uh, by going through the process of dialogue that the dialogue that very platform changes the very the very uh, uh, i i mean to say uh the 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 paraphernalia of all other things gets changed if we indulge in a sort of dialogue without any preconceived notion in a in a spirit of learning in a spirit of improving in a spirit of betterment in a spirit of bringing positivity in the world in a spirit of making the world a better place to live so dialogue enables shift in the very ground on which people stand transforming and expanding the sense of self and deepening their capacity to hear and inquire into perspective vastly different from their own and this uh, will further get explained when we will try to understand uh, to when we will see the uh, uh, actual implementation of this Uh, by the organization called sustained dialogue initiative how they have been able to actually uh, uh, implement this and uh, get the desired result uh my second assertion is dialogue act as a discipline of collective inquiry which is distinct from the valuable eight individually focused learning processes that populate the field of conflict resolution mediation organizational development therapy and even team building so uh, my second assertion is dialogue is actually a sort of a discipline of collective inquiry where the collective godness collective well being is actually not told by someone to reach to rather in a sort of an understanding and unlearning the people involved in the dialogue process are able to formulate the future course in a spirit of collective inquiry and in that sense it is different from the other such uh, 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 comparatively uh, similar mechanisms and tools like uh, tool, tools of conflict resolutions like uh, mediation organization development because they have preconceived idea preconceived goals uh, preconceived uh, notions to be achieved uh, the third assertion pertaining to dialogue which i want to make is and this is quite uh, not Uh, i will not say radical but uh, it has the hope it 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 has the potential to radically alter and change the existing realities of the world in a spirit of uh, betterment and positivity by bringing positivity uh, all over the world dialogue has the possibility for being an important breakthrough in the way human beings may govern themselves whether in public or private domain so dialogue has got a lot of potential maybe at this point of time uh, before going in for my fourth session uh, when uh, once we were discussing these things in our class generally the idea of hops comes to people who say that inherently human being are wrong inherently human being uh, the, uh, 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 the the state of nature is there and it is it is actually the the fear of punishment uh, the fear of uh, being hurt that actually prevents us from doing wrong and the hobbesian world actually has gained more currency and the manner in which the neoliberal ethics has engulfed us that has led to the uh, promotion uh, uh, a wider uh, publicity to the idea the hobbesian idea of uh, uh, the world being or the human nature being perpetually in a state of uh, war and uh, the life being uh, brutish nasty short uh, but in essence if we try to shift the gaze and try to look at things from a wider enlightened perspective then we will see that 
there has all through been an attempt in the opposite direction, meaning by the idea of human being, uh, the nature of human being always uh, being, some, uh, uh, being, uh, be, being negative, or uh, you can say the idea that the Hobbesian idea of human being being perpetually wrong actually has been balanced. There are other scholars who have, who have in, in various uh, 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 terms highlighted the fact that the very survival of the world is because, because of cooperation and dialogue and mutual uh, respect and mutual well-being, uh, care for others. Because the very survival of humanity is not possible unless and until people move ahead from this uh, idea of self-centeredness, which has been so, uh, 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 you can say, domineeringly pushed to the minds and in, in, in this uh, garb of neoliberal ethics, that anything away from that is not considered to be the rightful thing. And therefore, being a student of or being someone who is associated with the dialogic conversation or the importance of dialogue, we need to underline that, yes, another world is possible, another idea is possible, and there is the possibility of the betterment, and which actually has all through history been attempted by many a pupil. But for some reasons, for the reasons of uh, obvious uh, uh, earlier colonialism and uh, neocolonialism now, nowadays and the, 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 the purpose of uh, domination and dependence, those ideas actually have not gained currency. What dialogue, the spirit of dialogue does is, the spirit of dialogue actually revives that spirit in the human being, in the people, that yes, there is the possibility of uh, betterment in the world, in the current uh, situation of the world. There is the possibility of uh, making the world more inclusive, more secure, uh, uh, and, and, and a world where there, there will be empathy, a world where there will be inclusivity and a world where there will be the well-being of all, giving more importance, particularly to the weaker sections of the society. So the problem lies in the fact that there is a strategic shift of the gaze towards those uh, 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 ideas which gives more importance not to the creative potential of the human being or the liberatory potential of the human being, rather those aspects which in the words of uh, 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 Hobbes uh, relates mostly to the, the very inherent nature of being, uh, being uh, 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 associated more with the, the, the problematic aspect or you can say the idea that uh, the, the people, the, uh, uh, the feeling that uh, people are inherently biased, people are inherently wrong, people are, are, are uh, inherently uh, uh, governed by the selfish motives and selfish principles. So my uh, third assertion is dialogue has the possibility for being an important, for bringing an important breakthrough in the way human beings may interact and govern among themselves, whether in public or in private domain. Uh, I hope it's not, is it getting quite boring? Because in the afternoon, uh, in um, uh, generally in my university, students after uh, lunch go in for a siesta evening. Uh, so I hope it's not boring. If it's getting boring, I'll ask you some. I hope it's okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So good that you people are not getting bored. Otherwise, had you been my regular student, so they would if uh, in online mode, they, they, these are actually the problem of the online mode. So uh, good that you people are not feeling that. So the fourth is uh, maybe when we'll come to the uh, to the to the this is in a sense the philosophical part. When we will come to the actual part, the case study part, maybe that will be interesting. Uh, so the fourth assertion is, and maybe in a sense. Uh, we need to find interest in the class because otherwise we will not be doing justice to dialogue because it is a dialogue class. So even if you don't like, you have to find interest and you have to feel interested in the class. Okay. 
because otherwise you we will not be doing justice to dialogue so my fourth assertion is dialogue has the promise as an uh, and it actually emanates from the third assertion that dialogue has the promise as an innovative alternative approach to producing coordinated action among collectives sometimes it so happens that when we are talking in group i don't know uh, if uh, some of you have been involved in uh, student politics activities or maybe choosing your class representative or maybe uh, choosing some other uh, uh, sort of representative for something so if uh, you have been involved in that process then what happens it becomes very difficult to zero in on one option there are always chances of uh, differences there are always chances of sometimes even bitter uh, acrimony starts among even friends who should be the class representative so some 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 group of people uh, opt for some, uh, one the other group opt for another and there uh, doesn't uh, 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 come easy consensus and therefore uh, this the idea of dialogue as a process has the promise as an internet uh, as an innovative alternative approach to producing coordinated action among collective so when ever in the collectivity something has to be decided then through this process of dialogue dialogue has the potential to provide a means a mechanism through which the uh, very innovatively or uh, and as an alternative approach Uh, the the coordination among the different groups could be uh, had so with this first initial assertion of mine pertaining to dialogue let us now move to what is dialogue in essence dialogue is actually not just a tool uh, it's is actually more than a tool and a mechanism it is actually in wider sense a sort of a, a process and that process in itself is something which has which in itself provides the basis for bringing transformational change in the existing status quo so for dialogue it is it uh, 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 for uh, it is important for dialogue uh, and reconcil reconciliation uh, to become a strategic and central element of any sort of peace building and conflict resolution because dialogue is not simply a quick fix or a tool for bringing changes instantly rather it creates a situation it creates an ambience it creates a platform it creates a sort of an understanding in the enlightened form which leads to the creation Mm, is it only me who can't hear him? No, sir. There okay. is a issue with everybody. Him, so we can't hear him. Okay. okay. If there is a problem with his internet connection, let me contact him. hello uh, yes. suddenly 
Yeah. Are we back? Will... Yeah. Yes, you are back now. Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, sorry for the glitch because uh, might be the problem was from my side because when the power cuts off and mm -hmm. to get it connected to the uh, inverter, it the my net goes for some time perhaps. So this is the problem. Sorry for the and I I, I think you all must have now got used to such sort of internet glitches. Yes. Because you are living in that part of the world that these are part of the uh, regular thing. But still, I'm 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 sorry for this. And good that we got back in time. Uh, yes. So, or maybe should I think that uh, the lecture was getting quite boring, and therefore <laughs> it was by providence uh, that uh, these things happen, and so that you can get revived. And I should change the tone in which I'm taking the classes. Anyways, so uh, we got back in the right time. You all are here. Should I move? Yes, ahead? sir. Good. Good. Sometimes I also have yes, the impression sir. that the internet has frozen when I see the faces of you and the faces of you are not having any emotions. Then I, it it looks that might uh, the internet has at 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 frozen. So just give some sort of uh, uh, gesture that you are here, you are there, and I am the what what I am saying. You people are able to listen. Very much. Okay. Good. Yeah, so thank you so much. Okay. So uh, since this is a lecture on dialogue, so we need to be dialogic. So now, uh, the meaning of dialogue, after having highlighted my uh, our, our session regarding the importance of dialogue, let us now again come back to dialogue, what dialogue is, uh, some uh, uh, definitional aspects, and then we'll move, move on to the other things. So dialogue is a sort of a conversation for the purpose of uncovering the shared meaning of problems and situations and improving the understanding of the other. The initial definition with one of the students uh, has in the very beginning of the lecture highlighted that dialogue is the central element of dialogue. The thing which makes dialogue, dialogue, the importance of dialogue lies in the fact that it has the purpose of uncovering the shared meaning of problem. Mark the words, the shared meaning of problems and situation and improving the understanding of the other. So unlike in other forms of debate, for example, or political talks, the main purpose is to put your things in, is to get your ideas accepted is to win. Uh, you all would have participated in uh, school declamation and debates. Uh, debates, And in debate, the main uh, purpose was to win the debate anyhow. So whatever facts you have got, whatever arguments you have got, whether for or against the motion, you have to win the debate. But here in dialogue, what is important is the intention is the purpose of uncovering the shared meaning of problems and situation and improving the understanding of the other. So the main emphasis here in a dialogic conversation in a dialogic format is to try to understand or is to improve the understanding, uh, is to improve our understanding of the other. So it has an element of empathy. It has an element of sympathy. It has an element of bringing, I can, uh, if I can say enlightened understanding of things, enlightened understanding of the issue. So for example, the, again, take the example because the, most of you are students, many of you are students here. And again, I take the example of your uh, election for class representative or a student's union. These days, students' union elections are not being held. So I better talk about class representative. So what happens uh, if there is no consensus in nominating your class representative, then if a sort of a debate is organized, you will look in for the potential positive or positivities or the 
uh, potential winning characteristics of the candidate whom you are supporting. But what happens in a dialogic conversation is the idea to understand the other side, the importance of the other side. So in a, 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 a contestation for class representative, so the uh, representative whom you are not going to select, you will try to see the potential future positivities or uh, more, uh, more in terms of positive, positivities only because the negativities have already been pointed out by the, or the, 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 the contending partner, the op opponent partner. So in a dialogic con conversation, the importance is given to understand the ideas and issues which the opposite side is confronted with, okay? And in itself, this concept is quite, uh, when we are uh, talking about this and we are listening to this, it, 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 it looks to be quite, uh, you can say, philosophical. When we, when we are actually into the act, then we will realize that there is, there actually comes some sort of internal realization. And this has happened. This, this actually has happened. This, this might have happened with many of you, if you have involved in some sort, some such sort of processing. And as the case studies of these two uh, groups highlight, uh, there are uh, documented evidence that uh, the parties to the dialogue went with, with a sense of dizzying hat hatred, a sense of uh, 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 extreme uh, enmity. But when they went there, when they interacted, when they had the dialogue, and when they try to listen to the others, when they try to understand the situation which the other was in, in which that uh, commission of act was done, then the change of mind, the change of heart took place. And the initial idea before half an hour of that dialogue was quite different and that got vehemently uh, changed after the conversation with the opponent. So dialogue is actually a sort of a conversation for the purpose of uncovering the shared meaning of problems and situation and improving the understanding of the other. And then uh, we can also say that it is a process where individuals, groups, and organizations engage in listening and exchanging and experiencing with the aim of the main purpose of that exchange, that dialogue, that conversation, that talk is actually the following. These three, four points are the focal things which is emphasized in a dialogic conversation. What is the purpose of attending the dialogue or being a part of the dialogue is, the focus is to understand better the roots of the problem and the conflict, and not just your version of things. So understanding of the issue in its entirety, paying heed to the multiple factors at play in the creation of a situation in which that uh, problem has arisen or that conflict has taken place. The emphasis is on trying to connect the different dots to understand why actually those problems has actually happened. So understanding in a better sense, in a holistic sense, I will say, in a comprehensive manner, the roots of the problem and conflict. The second important point is the purpose of being in the dialogue is to find or to discuss the common needs. Common needs meaning by the needs which is actually taking care of the, uh, taking care of the needs of each parties to the, to the, uh, to the conflict or to the problem uh, which one is facing. So the dialogic conversation apart from trying to better understand, comprehensively understand 
uh, enlightenedly understand the roots of the problem and conflict aims to find common needs aim to go in for something which has to offer which actually offers something to everyone and not just bringing your things to the table so the purpose of a dialogic conversation the the purpose of the parties is maybe you will say that in the initial discussion i said that there is no purpose in a dialogue dialogue is just held in order to understand the thing there is no purpose here also the thing is not that we are going with a preconceived notion the purpose is not any preconceived purpose here the purpose relates to the very idea of the process how that process will continue so in that process of dialogue what will be emphasized is there will be the an emphasis on finding the common needs there will be an emphasis on there will be uh, there that there, there will be uh, uh, the 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 idea to uh, locate common interest common needs and common interest taking care and giving more importance to the other side and another important uh, aspect which a dialogic uh, conversation uh, emphasizes and highlights is the idea to go in for having a sort of a common value for the whole group so finding common needs finding common interest discovering common values and holistically the purpose of all this is to have a vision for a <laughs> in which there will be the taking care of the needs of each and every party so in the process of dialogue the interaction may take place among individuals or groups or organization but the main purpose is to exchange the ideas to exchange the experiences and to understand the others with the purpose of understanding in a holistic manner the root of the problem and conflict to find common needs to find common interest to discover common values and the purpose of all this is to finally have finally build a common vision for the future so these are the things which is uh, uh, generally emphasized in uh, any sort of uh, 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 dialogic conversation uh, which aims to uh, uh, not just bring changes in the existing status quo but to bring changes in the existing status quo in a positive manner with the intention to bring peace with the intention to bring uh, uh, positivity with the intention to bring to, in, to to have inclusivity of all so in the dialogue process the intention is to inquire to explore to discover to find common ground so a dialogic process is not mediated just to have the ready made solution of a problem rather the dialogue process is mediated with the intention to inquire into the existing problem in a comprehensive manner to explore the nitty gritty of the things to 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 discover the hitherto uh, uh, unknown factors which is trying to discover the hitherto unknown factors which is uh, which has uh, which generally doesn't come to the fore and finally to find the common ground and therefore dialogue becomes a very powerful tool uh, to be used in handling tensions and social unrest before during and after conflict and violence outbreaks so there are things uh, which the efficacy of which lies only after the happening of the incident so something has happened and then only only after that these things will happen you can go in for mediation only after the problem has has 
taken place only after the conflict has uh, uh, has taken place but the importance of the process of dialogue lies in the fact that it can be initiated at any point of time so in international relations we have this concept of in terms of uh, war the concept of pre preemptive notion of war so the preemptive notion of war is that if you think that your enemy is trying to or maybe trying to harm you or hurt you if you are convinced then you can preemptively strike okay so i have taken a very bad analogy to explain this but since i am a student of international politics so i keep uh, uh, utilizing my, uh, my 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 training in international uh, uh, politics war and security so the purpose here is to highlight the fact that dialogue process can be initiated even before the occurrence of the conflict or problem or violence or whatever be the thing so through this process of dialogue what is possible is that is to preemptively try to solve the problem before it has actually arisen or it has actually taken place so there are many an example whereby there was the 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 potential of uh, 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 problem taking place there is the potential of some conflict taking place but then this mechanism of dialogue as has been creatively utilized so beforehand all the parties assembled together and some sort of uh, 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 mediate uh, through some sort of uh, a discussion and understanding that uh, future violence or that future war could be averted so dialogic conversation or the idea of dialogues importance also lie in the fact that it is a powerful tool which can be used in handling tension and social unrest and conflict and all sorts of problem before during and even after conflicts and there are uh, evidences to show that dialogue has been quite successful in many a cases before the conflict even between the conflict and after the conflict and of course uh, we must also not keep ourselves oblivious to the to the existing reality that in many a cases dialogue has failed too so there is this possibility of the failure of dialogue too but the importance of dialogue lies in the fact that there are chances that if the process of dialogue is mediated with good intention and in the right ambience then there are possibility that the positive uh, the, that that the possi uh, uh, possible problem could be averted possi possible conflict could be averted and avoided uh, so the uh, ethical purpose of understanding this concept of dialogue is to spread awareness about the hope in our contemporary world of uh, generating a greater cultural understanding a greater understanding in every sense uh, between uh, all sorts of people the warring factions the differing factions the problematic groups and uh, uh, with the increase increasing uh, general understanding of the intercultural understanding many of the possible problem of the world could itself be averted and through this process uh, we will or we will also be able to increase our collective capacity to tackle the the the, the problem of the global commons for example the problem of the uh the, uh the the climate change the, in the impact of the climate change uh, the ecological goals all these things and this process also help us in finding better ways of handling political differences at all levels non violently so uh, the ethical purpose of giving so much importance to the dialogic process is the fact that apart from giving uh in terms of uh, uh, philosophical origin the idea of hope uh, which is generally lessening at a very fast pace it actually provides 
uh, sort of a practical, uh, the, the, the past provides a sort of a practical evidence to show that in the past, things have actually, uh, things have bettered in the, uh, in the way uh, where dialogue form, dialogue con conversation has actually been able to be utilized in the manner in which it should have been utilized. So this is not to say that we will not have conflict. Conflict can never be averted. There will always be conflict. But what this dialogic process can be able to achieve is to lessen the possibility of the conflict becoming much more violent. So through this process of dialogue, the impending conflict, the impending violence, the impending problem are liable to be solved in a, in a spirit of inquiry, in a a spirit of uh, uh, solving the problem for the greater good of all the constituting member or all the uh, warring parties. So the aim is here not to, uh, to remove the conflict or put an end to the conflict, which is not possible to. The aim is actually to transform actually or potentially violent conflicts into non-violent process of change, understanding and growth. So the idea of a dialogic process, dialogic process becoming a very, uh, a, 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 a very positive thing lies in the fact that through utilizing this creative potential, liberating potential of the dialogic process, the potentially violent conflict, the potentially violent problem can be transformed into a non-violent process. And that non, through that uh, uh, idea of non-violent uh, understanding of things, that uh, potential crisis could be changed and may uh, ultimately end up leading to the uh, growth and prosperity. So, uh, with this, uh, uh, I think the idea of uh, dialogue is now amply uh, uh, clear to us. Uh, what uh, I'll do now is to uh, very quickly try to understand uh, since when uh, so much uh, uh, despondency have come pertaining to the idea of dialogue. Is it that all through history, Things have been decided, the world problem and the problem of every sort, not just world problem, inter uh, 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 estate problem, intra estate problem, organizational problem, problem at various institutions. Is it that all through history, these problems have been solved only through the mechanism of uh, power relationship? Uh, in the sense that there will be a powerful third party mediation and only through the process of powerful third party mediation or uh, in the process of a, a, a dominance and dependence relationship, things will be decided. Is it that all through history, things uh, have actually taken this route or is it that because of the manner in which the world has been hegemonized by a particular ideology, we have been hijacked into thinking in this way that the potential solution of a problem could be made possible only in the mechanism of a, a dominance and dependence relationship. So at only the, in terms of power, in terms of hard power, in terms of the uh, utilization of the hard powers only, things could get solved. Uh, we have seen that uh, in recently, we have seen the, very recently, the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, conflict. We are seeing uh, since uh, we have born and since many of, many of you have born and since uh, maybe the time uh, 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 our parents are there, the problem of uh, Palestine and Israel. Uh, the problem of, uh, for example, uh, 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 the uh, Irish problem, the problem of uh, in Ireland, uh, the problem, many such persisting problem of the world. So these persisting problem of the world gains 
more world attention because they have not been able to be solved by various processes. Okay. But there are examples of many a problem which has been solved and the, in the solution of those problems, the importance of dialogue or the dialogue process has been utilized. So the part of the problem is that, uh, which we in international uh, relations say, power monism. Power monism meaning by that, there is a tendency to think everything in terms of uh, 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 power relationship. So for example, there uh, currently we now have the uh, preponderance of American power. But despite the fact that America has got so much of preponderance in terms of power. The military might of America is such high that the combined military might of the world, including China, Russia, and everyone, if they all combine together, they will not be able to match the American military might. Okay? But even despite the having of so much of power, we all know that what has happened, he, uh, America has to eat a humble pie and for that matter, there was a lot of other uh, reasons too in Afghanistan. Okay. So there is a limit to the use of power. There is a limit to the preponderance of power. But when we try to see the potential of dialogue, Dialogue, the mechanism of dialogue, the idea of dialogue, the process of dialogue has not any such limitation. So the creative potential, the liberatory potential of the idea of dialogue is even in some sense more than what we generally seem to see in terms of the power relationship of the world. Why actually it is happening so? It is happening so because our mind has been trained to think so. So through such uh, 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 ideas of having a conversation on dialogue, what is emphasized is the feeling that, yes, there is the possibility of bringing radical changes in the world. And there are avenues through which those radical changes in the world could be made possible. The world could become a better place to live in. And the world could be, uh, become a better place to live in if we try to situate the limit of power in its proper sense. If we do not make ourselves power monist, if we try to understand things holistically, if we try to emphasize and promote and popularize the idea that there are mechanisms and avenues through which the creative potential of humanity could be utilized. Humanity, human being, does not just have this urge for self-development. There is the progressive element of uh, 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 humanity too, and that actually takes into account the well-being of the whole society, the well-being, the, the comprehensive well-being of the, of the all, the comprehensive well-being of the world. Nowadays, as a result of the uh, impending crisis which we are witnessing one after another, so we had the global financial crisis, series of financial crisis, then we have the global uh, 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 meltdown of different sorts which keeps occurring after regular intervals. Now the world is confronted with this menace of global pandemic. So there is no way out. There is no way out through the existing mechanism of power relationship which exists. And people tend to think in that terms of power relationship only. There needs to be radical changes, and that radical changes needs to first be popularized in terms of the ideas in the mind. And there should be the, uh, uh, there should be the, uh, the confidence in the people 
to think and realize and understand that yes, there are mechanisms through which positivity and well-being is possible. Dialogue process is such a mechanism which has the potential to bring much more uh, 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 positivity in the world of today. And this is now, this has actually now become, this is not just a, uh, what we say, uh, this is not just uh, a wishful thinking. This has actually now been necessitized because if we see the ecological, impending ecological crisis we are going to face, the hydrological crisis, water crisis, food crisis, and pandemic in a sense has actually highlighted I have got some Okay, so uh, because it was a dialogue process, you were listening. I sorry, I couldn't. Uh, uh, thank you, Bajat, for reminding me of this. Uh, because generally, it so happens that when we initiate a dialogue of this sort, we keep uh, uh, moving in that sense. Uh, so, uh, uh, before coming to that, uh, 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 Bajat, uh, question and the session, let me just very quickly uh, come to the uh, case study part because that is actually I'm mandated to do because that was there in there. So, this. There is this one, I'll, I'll just very quickly and very briefly uh, uh, tell about these two things, uh, about the sustained dialogue initiative. I will tell in a bit of detail in five to 10 minutes and just in two, three minutes about the Nansen Dialogue Center. Uh, so the Nansen Dialogue Center actually was institu uh, is, a, is a institute, uh, I can say an organization, uh, which, was, uh, which was formed in the aftermath of the Balkan Wars and uh, uh, in, it was formed and it was actually uh, uh, established uh, with its center in uh, Norway, but with its uh, uh, different units in different uh, places of uh, the Balkan countries. So uh, the wars in the Balkan uh, in the 1990s left many societies divided and segregated. And uh, many of you will be, uh, might be aware of the fact that uh, the wars in Balkan was one of the most deadly war. And there was this problem of uh, the, the Serbs and Kurds and uh, the, 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 the problem of accommodating the aspirations of the people in a political manner. And that actually led to the emergence of that. And that was a very deadly war. So the United Nations was not able to do the things, uh, no, not, not, not able to control the things. So the wars in the Balkans in the 1990s left many societies divided and segregated uh, with little hope for a better future. So the feeling of despondency was very much there. Feeling of hopelessness was very much there and nothing better is going to happen. That is nothing, nothing good is going to, 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 to come. Uh, with the aim of bringing hope through dialogue and reconciliation, several Nansen Dialogue Research Center were established in Croatia, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Serbia, Montenegro, Kosovo, and Macedonia. What this uh, uh, Nansen Dialogue Center, the very name suggests Nansen Dialogue Center did, was that it emphasized upon bringing people together. Those people, those categories of people who had become sworn enemies of each other, that they would, they would, they would not stop uh, 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 before killing uh, each one of them if they happen to find the other person. Okay. What Nansen Dialogue Center did was they actually brought the group representative of those varying factions to different locales, to different locations. And by bringing to different locations, they were involved in a process of dialogue in which uh, for many sessions, they were just asked to recount their experiences, whatever problems they had with the other group. They just were asked to, to, to tell about those problems which they have faced. So uh, with the aim of bringing hope through dialogue and reconciliation, uh, several Nansen Dialogue Center were established in Croatia, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Serbia, Montenegro, Kosovo, and Macedonia. These centers are the core of the Nansen Dialogue Center, which is actually a network which shares its know-how and experience with local and national and international actors and partners to jointly support dialogue peace building initiatives through uh, conducting dialogue uh, sessions around the world. 
and by uh, taking cue from the success of the activities conducted by the Nansen uh, Dialogue Center in, uh, in these parts of the world, uh, other uh, countries, uh, other uh, people have also, uh, different parts of the world have also tried to do this. In Shang uh, uh, Shanghai, uh, there was this Shong Shanghai peace talk that has actually also happened as a result of uh, the, the, the positive eff effect which happened uh, because of the initiatives of Nansen Dialogue Center. What Nansen Dialogue Center does is that it uh, uh, gathers different categories of people. Uh, uh, politicians, journalists, teachers, parents, people, the general populace uh, for dialogue about their own conflict, exploring potential solution and opening possibilities for institutional changes where the situation is no longer seen through ethnic or monocultural lenses, but rather with a view to join, joint understanding that benefits all. And uh, uh, just uh, with this, uh, uh, I'll uh, uh, complete the Nansen Dialogue Center, rather going into the details of the things which we have done. Their experience actually uh, has foregrounded the fact that dialogue can be a very effective tool in reconciliation and peace building. And we believe that uh, the Nansen Dialogue uh, Center people, that dialogue and work for reconciliation should be given higher priority when dealing with conflicts around the world. So the message from the Nansen Dialogue Center is that hitherto much importance has not been given to, and um, dialogue has not been prioritized Though there should be in terms whenever the conflict is there, there should be a prioritized uh, understanding of the, uh, pr the, there should be priority, priority given to, uh, uh, to utilize this idea of dialogue to uh, bring changes in the society. Then the other uh, uh, case study, which I wanted to uh, very quickly flag in, is that of a sustained dialogue institute. This sustained dialogue institute is actually uh, located in Washington, and it was form. Uh, it was established by uh, um, a retired diplomat who himself had been in the process of negotiation between the United States of America and it was involved in the ping pong diplomacy in Russia, uh, China too. So the main uh, idea of this Sustained Dialogue Institute is to create a dialogic uh, group. And in that dialogic group, try to initiate some sort of trigger, positive trigger. And that trigger should be utilized to orient the pupil towards the the uh, uh, creation of a solution which is actually in uh, uh, which, which, which which in reality and actually takes care of uh, the uh, 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 differing constituent elements which are part of the process so the main and they have actually tried to prove this through uh, scientific uh, facts through about how uh, the various uh, uh, neurotherapy happens and how through neurotherapy particular things actually the the the, the uh, uh, atrocious things of which one has experienced in the past could be forgotten and a, a positive uh, approach could be could be instilled for the uh, for bringing changes for, for, for bringing positive changes so the main emphasis of this uh, sustained dialogue institute is to bring uh, transformation and that bring transformation through uh, uh, through uh, uh, bringing in some sort of trigger. And there are five concepts. They have actually um, tried to uh, uh, document the things, how uh, the documented the things, how they actually pursue these, uh, uh, this idea of sustained dialogue. So what uh, they do is they actually, uh, sustained dialogue is a, Conflict transformation process, uh, which was uh, conceptualized by Hal Saunders uh, from his own experiences of uh, 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 diplomacy and being in the, uh, in, in the process of the conflict resolution mechanism. So the five concepts which uh, uh, they try to emphasize upon 
and try to work upon uh, they are the in the sustained dialogue five concepts uh, are identified which define how the relationship between the various groups are forged and how the relationship between the different groups which are at odds with with others they they are mediated so the different uh, uh, relationship is very important and the different uh, uh, different uh, uh, concepts are one the concept number one the, is the concept of identity uh, then the concept of interest then the concept of power then uh, fourth is the concept of perceptions and stereotypes and fifth uh, the uh, previous patterns of interaction so to bring jo to trigger change and bring transformation what this initiative does this new dialogic initiative does is to emphasize upon the interrelationship of the group of the varying parties of the different factions and emphasize upon the relationship in in these terms in terms of interest power perception stereotypes uh, previous patterns of interaction and by doing this what they do is it is the similar it's it's it keeps popping uh, so i thought that there is another message uh, is there any uh, is there new message no it's okay Uh, so, uh, what uh, this sustained dialogue initiative does is emphasize upon the relationship and relationship in terms of interest, in terms of uh, power, in terms of uh, identity, in terms of stereotypes and previous patterns of. And what they do is in the dialogic conversation uh, 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 group, what they finally do is they create create a sort of a dialogic a space which they call as the dialogue. container so after emphasizing upon those five uh, 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 modes of uh, relationship they create a sort of a dialogic dialogic uh, uh, container and in that dialogic container what they do is they emphasize upon four things and these four things are listening respecting uh, and uh, uh, the third one is uh, uh, Taken it somewhere. Listening, respecting, suspending, and uh, finally giving in to the other. So listening is actually it is actually uh, done in all sorts of dialogue. We we listen to the others and give more importance to what others have to say. In respecting part, what they do is they deliberately try to uh, create a situation in which. Uh, there are chances that uh, the interaction between the group will um, may lead to some sort of uh, of uh, uh, dialogic uh, differences some sort of uh, uh, i mean to say a uh, uh, problem and in that uh, mediated uh, 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 talk what they do is they try to instill the feeling of respect in the different varying groups and not only just they do this they also try to suspend the emotions of the people for the time being and suspending the emotion means that they try to listen they try to create a dialogic uh, uh, environment in which all the negativities which the opponent have that opponent is actually asked to voice all the problems which he is facing or she is facing so after voicing all the uh, uh, enmity or acrimony or differences one has and when the other person also listens to everything the the emotion of the upper person, uh, uh, other person is suspended for the time being and then this overall interaction finally leads to a situation in which the 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 initial differences between the group is uh, generally avoided so it it doesn't happen all the time so sometimes it so happens that they have to they have to suspend the, uh, uh, the 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 dialogue for the time being they have to forego the dialogue for a different meeting various uh, a number of meetings are uh, are held it's not that uh, this happens in just two three four five meetings so there is limitless meeting which has to happen but if 
uh, the experience of a sustained dialogue initiative says that if things are pursued uh, uh, with a positive uh, interest and things are uh, passionately pursued, the dialogic, uh, the, the creative liberatory potential of dialogue is uh, persuasively pursued, passionately pursued, then there is the chances that positive things will come out. And uh, in terms of uh, their uh, effect, their effect have actually been uh, uh, seen in different uh, 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 level, at the level of uh, international uh, relations, at the level of, uh, uh, we may say, uh, the uh, different groups in, in, in terms of campus, in terms of, uh, uh, you can say, uh, uh, Three, three level they have actually tried to explain at college campus and at uh, international level and at community level. So very quickly, these three uh, at international level, just the documentations which have been done by their scholars here. At international level, they have uh, especially highlighted uh, the interaction which they had with the people of Tajikistan. So in the aftermath of the uh, uh, 1991 crisis, when uh, Soviet Union uh, uh, broke down and uh, uh, other nationalities emerged. So post 1990s, there were co uh, quite uh, a lot of problem in the Central Asian countries. And uh, in the Central Asian countries, they particularly emphasized and hold this sustained dialogue initiative. And in that uh, uh, Tajikistan meeting, one particular incident uh, is uh, particularly is, 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 is mentioned. And uh, uh, the documentee says that uh, from the first meeting in March 1993 until March 1994, participants, uh, I'd like to uh, emphasize this, participants moved from being barely able to look at each other to playing a significant role in creating conditions for UN-mediated peace negotiations. From tense discussions that were little more than an exchange of accusations in an atmosphere of deep suspicion and even fear, just prior to the onset of official negotiations in March 1994, the dialogue participation produced the first of many joint memorandums. So how quickly, uh, just after uh, a series of meetings, such, transfer, uh, such drastic transformations have happened and they have actually been able to, to come up with their memorandum too. Which were who were initially not uh, uh, were ab being able to see even eye to eye, and they were uh, uh, jointly formulating joint memorandum. So, in terms of international relations, they have documented it at community level. Well, I'm not going to uh, emphasize upon this. At community level, they have uh, uh, emphasized upon uh, 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 an interaction which happened, sustained dialogue interaction which happened in the city of. Uh, Columbus in Indiana, uh, United States of America. Uh, there also the uh, sustained dialogue, uh, it, it's documented that sustained dialogue there uh, designed the capacity to transform individuals and relationships. The intention of the moderating team was simply to create conditions with those who had experienced ill treatment by the local police could share their concerns directly with the police chief. So what they did there was, there was a lot of, because of the problem, uh, the uh, uh, police interaction with the black population was there, and there was a uh, uh, very, uh, very high level of uh, distrust among the population and the police. Uh, and so what they did was through their sustained initiative, they asked the police officers to come and interact with the local uh, populace, uh, which had a very negative opinion on them. And then through a series of uh, discussion, through a series of dialogue and sustained dialogic environment, uh, they were able to finally, uh, finally, uh, it so happened that uh, the, the initial acrimony which existed between the two that got subsided and there was a very good relationship between uh, the, 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 the locals of that area and the, uh, the, the, the police administration. So it was for uh, the, uh, what we have discussed earlier is a win-win situation for all. So for the overall administration of the area, it was a great thing. Another uh, thing which they have emphasized is uh, their work in the college campuses. Uh, so in the college campuses too, uh, the studies show that the outcome of 
transformative learning and the transformational experiences that make up the overall learning include perspective change, the acquisition of new knowledge and skills, confidence, self-awareness, emotional development, autonomy, values, and a framework for a leadership. And the timing of the college is the, uh, the such uh, uh, years of adolescence and uh, uh, you know, the, the youthful age. And if in that age, uh, students realize the importance of going in for a dialogic conversation for bringing in positivity in the world, that is indeed a great thing. And they have been able to do this. So uh, there is this example of uh, 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 Jessica, uh, who was a second year medical student. And uh, she had a very bitter experience pertaining to the administration and the, uh, the, the, uh, 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 her colleagues. And uh, uh, she and others were similarly asked to come in a sort of a, a sustained dialogue in, uh, initiative. And as a result of that, a lot of uh, positive things happen. And the, the overall uh, ambience of amity, overall ambience of fellow feeling, overall ambience of camaraderie were able to be uh, forged as a result of sustained dialogue initiative. So uh, without uh, taking much of uh, your time now, I've been asked to. Uh, one thing which uh, I would like to uh, uh, underline as a parting shot is to uh, get ourselves, we all need to get ourselves from the power monism nature of the current epoch where everything is tried to be understood in terms of power only, the, the destructive, or you can say the hard power sense. So there are still a lot of untapped potential and those untapped potential needs to be tapped if at all humanity has to survive because we are at the cusp of a very, uh, uh, problematic situation. So unless and until we try to bring changes, as, as, as it is said that uh, in, in uh, war studies and strategic studies, it's, it's generally say, and we, we advise that war begins in the mind of men, it is said, but uh, people, I should say, war begins in the mind of the people. So the opposite of war, that also needs to begin in the mind of the people. And there should be an attempt by all of us to highlight and tap this untapped potential of many a progressive idea. The idea of utilizing the possibility of dialogue to bring positive changes in the world has been very much left untapped. Even at a smaller level, we are in our schools, we are in colleges, many of you are in your organizations, there too. Things begin from a smaller level. So not just at the international level. So maybe there will be high profile talk and dialogue by United Nations that may fail. But if things grow up from the bottom, when there will be bottom up approach, then there are chances that the still untapped, unleft potential of dialogue as a mechanism to bringing peace in the world may be utilized. So my parting shot is there is the possibility of a better world. There is very much the possibility of the creation of a better world, which will be more inclusive, which will be more secure, which will be able to take care of the needs of everyone. As Gandhi has also said that, uh, the world has enough to take care of the needs of everyone, but not the greed of everyone. So the greed aspect actually comes through the power ambitions and the, 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 the uh, emphasis on power monism here. So uh, let's hope for uh, a better world to be made possible. And maybe uh, we all and the candidates who have gone over here, they'll be able to popularize the idea of dialogue. And in dialogue, Mr. Bezad and his team is actually doing a great work. And uh, with this positive note, I'd like to end and we, I'm open to questions. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, sir, uh, for this brilliant talk. And uh, I'm sure everybody will agree uh, to your point that the argument that you know any approach to dialogue has to be from bottom up.
Um, and in fact, it is true for a lot of things, not only uh, our approach to dialogue, but also about politics or about any good basic democracy too, that anything that comes from up to down, uh, it is not really re uh, effective as much. Uh, so with this, um, now we open door for questions and answers and I see Pragya has raised the hand. Pragya, please go ahead and turn on your camera. My my camera is turned on. I don't know why okay, it's not showing. Can, yeah, I, can you see it now? I don't know. Yes, now we can see. It. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so uh, I have three questions actually. Um, I'm just going to be very brief. Uh, the first is I wanted to ask uh, about India Pakistan. Why do you think that uh, you know the dialogues have been um, uh, not so successful? Is it because of uh, you know because there has been because they've not been continuous or is it because of some other reasons like personality crash or something, some other reasons? Uh, so that is one thing I want, uh, my first question. The second is, um, I want to also uh, talk about, like you mentioned that there's been a lot of militarization. So a lot of uh, countries uh, actually think that if if they have militarization, then, uh, you know, it gives them an upper hand to bring a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, the other party uh, to the table, to the dialogic table. So, you know, uh, uh, I don't, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm conflicted with this. I want to know your opinion about how successful this part is in terms of using power to uh, to eventually have a dialogue. And the third uh, question is about, um, uh, you know, immigrants. Uh, so for example, uh, when, uh, when there was, uh, when because of the Syrian war, there was immigration in Europe and uh, Germany, and there were some crimes uh, related, uh, you know, to the, uh, I mean, which, which, because, which were more cultural issues, uh, uh, you know, because um, the immigrants didn't understand the culture. So Germany actually sat down and had a, uh, and still ha continues to have a lot of uh, integration programs, which are like welcoming programs. They included the, um, you know, they included uh, a lot of uh, older people uh, into educating the immigrants, etc. So uh, versus France, you know, so um, I would also want you to kind of throw, uh, you know, a little light on, how dialogue can also sort of help, uh, like France actually just had laws against, uh, you know, some, like they had the hijab ban and they, they reacted. So I, so also that's the third question. I want you also to sort of throw a little bit of light on success of, because now we're going to have a refugee world after climate crisis. So, you know, like uh, how does that help? So these, these three are sorry for, I mean, I, I have been very intrigued by the talk. So uh, these are my questions, thanks. So, Bezas, should I uh, go ahead or should I take uh, some other question and then, as you say? Um, uh, whatever, however you prefer it. So, if you have taken note of the questions uh, that Pragya asked, uh, we can maybe have another person ask the question and then uh, we can move ahead. Okay. Then, Aga, please go ahead. You are on mute. Uh, please unmute your microphone. So, so I have two uh, questions. First is what's uh, how uh, is what is the relation between dialogue and reconciliation? Number one, and number two, uh, I have uh, I want to uh, know about from you about the dialogue between India and Pakistan because I have uh, seen because I belong to Kashmir and I have seen that the definition uh, definitions of the dialogue uh, is not been fitted when it comes to Delhi and Srinagar. Uh, what I have seen all these years, dialogue between Delhi and uh, Delhi and Islamabad means just to facilitate the dialogue uh, further. These two uh, things I wanted to know from you, sir. You can address these questions, sir, and then... Uh, very good, uh, important uh, uh, questions, very good questions, Pragya and Aga both. And of course, India-Pakistan relationship is a hot thing. And whenever one goes somewhere, uh, one doesn't escape this. Uh, so one thing which uh, uh, very, all these three questions are very uh, uh, pertinent and very important, Pragya. Very nice questions you have put up. 
So your first question pertained to the India-Pakistan relation and the failure of dialogue there. And the second was uh, uh, related to uh, militarization uh, and uh, pursued by some of the countries to actually have their say. And even, in, if, even if they want to have their say and bringing parties to the table because if they're powerful, they're better. So good. And the third was pertaining to immigrants and uh, the, the, the integration policies of Germany and France. So the, your third question was, if you, 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 if you may explain it a bit, you wanted me to uh, explain the uh, difference uh, 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 in policies of immigration of France or uh, the future of uh, immigration the world over. You know how 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 dialogue can, is but you know like how can the dialogue process uh, be uh, when uh, in, when we are integrating uh, uh, resi residents and immigrants so like okay. you know because there's bound to be some conflict so you know what are the best practices so uh, I'll begin with uh, your last question first. Uh, I'm reminded of when you asked me this question, I was reminded of uh, the German chancellor uh, hugging the uh, uh, people who have just now uh, entered the country. And there was this call of uh, uh, welcoming in uh, welcomes in, in uh, uh, German language to those people who have uh, come to their country and uh, the distribution of uh, uh, blankets and, and cloths and all the things. Uh, it contrast this with after some time, after six, seven, eight months, there was the change of uh, 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 government. Or, uh, there was not the change of government. There was uh, the populist upsurge against this. And this the same people, uh, the same not the same people, but uh, other group of migrants who have arrived, they were they were shown um, uh, 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 red chilies. They were they were kicked out, and uh, both these uh, optics were captured in the international media. So a lot depends on how the existing reality tries to mediate with the issues at stake. How the existing reality tries to. Uh, uh, to, to find a solution to the existing issues. So what is happening in uh, France, for example, or uh, uh, in other parts of Europe, in, in Germany, pertaining to immigrants, if, if we try to comprehensively understand this, the problem is for both the host country as well as the guests who are going, the, the, the immigrants who are going, there is not the understanding or attempt to understand the real problem, the real issues at stake. So it's all have, it all have to do with the political posturing and the, the, the parties which are fighting elections. So when some uh, welfareist uh, liberal, liberal oriented parties are there in power, they try to give the impression that, see, we are here, we are very liberal people and we are, we are very welcoming people and we are trying to accommodate the things. When populist uh, people come with right wing leaning comes to power, they actually do the opposite. So the problem here, in respect to the things which we have discussed, the dialogic process, is that the essence of dialogue is not taken care of in this process. So what the uh, uh, dialogic process actually uh, uh, tries to underline, the dialogic process, if we go through the theory, which we have discussed at length, actually goes into the detail. And that may also be, in a sense, a response to your and uh, Mr. Aga's question of the unsuccessfulness of the dialogue between uh, the countries, India and Pakistan. So it is because of the fact that uh, the the, the process of integration or the process of dialogue is not pursued in the right spirit. There are politics there and the world actually generally is, is, is governed through uh, mainly, or you can say 
as actually domineeringly governed by the quick fix solution of things so it is because of the quick fix and all the governments which are in power uh, even the united nations this there is this uh, this five yearism syndrome uh, uh, prevalent everywhere five yearism syndrome meaning by till the time one is in power so there is no real talk about the solution of the permanent solution of the problem so if at all one wants to solve the problem then one has to go to the roots of the problem which is one of the important element of dialogue so in dialogue what we do is we try to go to the roots of the problem so what is the root of the problem why people are migrating to uh, european countries why the government of europe some of the government of europe are actually uh, um, uh, hell bent in dispelling those people who are coming or why for some time some countries are uh, able to welcome the people so the dialogue process in its theory how dialogue process will be able to be a solution to this is when such a narrative will be able to gain ground all over the world that there is a need to find solution to the existing problem in its entirety and not just to either postpone the problem or provide a quick fix solution meaning by there is for uh, uh, regulating migration there is international uh, uh, organization for migration iom international organization of migration is there it does a lot many things it and even united nations have a special agencies too pertaining to the to the regulation of migration and they actually have uh, made a lot of mechanism to uh, distribute the, uh, the 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 immigrants going to the different countries but the problem is the compact which has been signed by the united nations and international organization for migration they are not respected by the 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 different european countries so because of the tendency to postpone the problem what happens is that there is not taking care of the actual problem which is at stake which is at hand so there, if there is a horde of uh, uh, immigrants uh, uh, going to a particular country what that country may be doing either welcome or doesn't welcome okay but ideally what should happen what the dialogic process which we have just now studied what that tells us to that tells us to involve the different parties in a true spirit of solving the 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 problem the real problem the the root of the problem and if we go to the root of the problem the problem exists because of the fact that there is the involvement of many of the western countries in the wars which is happening in the middle eastern countries so if the wars in the middle eastern countries are happening there is the involvement of multiple players in that so in order to solve that problem of uh, migration what needs to be done is to have a proper uh, mechanism proper dialogue proper dialogue uh, proper dialogue in the sense that maybe united nations will host maybe international organization of migration will host and there should be this uh, this uh, uh, i want to say uh, this feeling among all the stakeholders that the real solution should have to be forged in and not just avoid the solution for the time being avoid the problem for the time being so the problem existing in uh, germany problem existing in france pertaining to this this will continue and this can only be solved if all the stakeholders not just the immigrants who are going under particular government rather all those countries which are involved in the process that the 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 the, the route through which they go the the uh, international mafia, ma mafia which uh, uh, which uh, uh, controls the flow of the population the united nations the different agencies of the united nations all have to come together in a dialogic form in a dialogic form and only if all of them come together in a spirit of finding solution only then this problem uh, can be tackled otherwise this will continue uh, 
Uh, today it is Germany. Tomorrow there will be some other country, and it will keep continuing. Uh, similarly, in as as you asked about uh, India Pakistan, why there is the the failure of uh, the dialogue process. So uh, the, what we have discussed is that there are difference between political talk and dialogue. So generally, what we see is, and as uh, Aga has also asked, the difference between talk between uh, Delhi and uh, Srinagar. So dialogue as a process needs to be understood in its essence and needs to be contrasted with the political talk which takes place. So maybe if a uh, true solution has to be forged between, for example, uh, 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 Delhi and uh, 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 Srinagar or Kashmir and, uh, or uh, Pakistan and India, then for that, it should not be a political act in that sense. Even the final thing which we see, the occurrence of the dialogue, that needs to be supplemented by the creation of an ambience, a proper ambience, whereby people are able to internalize the things which they actually want to. So the problem lies with the people, I will say, people in the sense that, see what is happening. Have you seen that what is happening these days when the cricket match takes place between India and Pakistan? What happens? Uh, you can see any of the Facebook posts and you can realize the level of animosity and differences which exist between the people. So what dialogue process actually wants and, and uh, tries to emphasize upon for a for a solution. Even if, for example, for that matter, even if a political talk is signed between, uh, between, for example, Pakistan and India, but that will be merely talks. That will be merely signs and signatures and, and, and uh, amendments and treaties. The actual percolation down of the spirit will not be seen in the people. So what dialogue approach says that things should bring from, should emanate from below. So if there will be the pressure from the people to the government that see this needs to be done. We need to forge in good relationship with our neighbor. If this will become, the day this will become the topmost priority of the electorate, both in, for example, uh, uh, our neighboring country, Pakistan and, and, and India, the day this becomes a, a, a reality, so there will be the, the, the result of the talks. There will be the result of the political talks even. So what needs to be emphasized is the spirit with, 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 with which things needs to be carried out. Otherwise, there will be, we have seen, there, is, there has been a lot of talk. There has been a lot of uh, amendments and treaties. But the percolation down of those things have not taken place on the ground. So things needs to, and for this, what I say is, we need to bring changes in the mind of the people. There needs to be reconfiguration of the mind because still now what we have done is we have programmed ourselves to understand things in terms of power relationship only. We have become power monist and that is the problem and that is the reason of a lot many problems which is existing in the world. There is nothing whose solution is not possible. Everything, every single problem has its solution, some sort of solution, if not the overall solution or perpetuated solution. But the problem is we are not able to incentivize the positive things. See what happens. Uh, I hope I can say this here. If someone has to win elections and because it's the democracy in most of the countries, so what happens? What is in incentivized? If the public, if the electorate wants hospital, if the electorate wants uh, other amenities of life to be the poll criteria, then things will be different. So what ultimately matters is how our mind sees things. And this can be, uh, this can be programmed in a different way because the existing reality tries to 
understand things in a particular manner in which in which that is why i give more importance to the to the constructivist uh, 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 frame of international politics that that possibility of peace is there and that is how uh, there is a scholar of international politics i'm forgetting the name he talks about in terms of democratic peace theory so democratic peace theory otherwise it's not very uh, 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 i'm not a fan of that but in this sense uh, what uh, the scholar says that generally democracies do not fight ideally democracies should not fight ideally why because in democracy the will of the people prevails and the will of the people will never want finally to have a situation in which war like situation is there because war brings problem to everyone if war happens in conflict happens even for the victors it is quite a problematic things even if two countries are going to war the country which wins even that country has to has to bear the brunt of the war a poet has rightly said that jang to khud ek masla hai jang kya masalon ka hal hoge so war is never a solution but still people go to war why because generally the programming of our mind has been done in such a manner because of colonialism because of neo colonial uh, neo liberal ethics uh, because of the power monism of the thing we have been programmed to think think of things in a particular way so i think and as regards militarism to prague i think uh, it again i think that uh, that uh, uh, what i have explained in terms of uh, the dialogue in terms of uh, the essence of dialogue that explains this because if as a result of militarization you are able to bring the other party to the table and you by dint of your power you are able to solve the problem but that problem is not solved that problem is solved on paper that problem has not been solved in reality that is why you keep seeing the perpetuation of the problem after a long time see what happened in 1991 soviet union is integrated so is there a solution of everything there is it that all the countries which disintegrated from soviet union they are all well it's not that because the problem is postponed if we just do the things in terms of the calculation of power politics if the real solution has to be done that needs a sort of a programmatic change in the very understanding in the very a uh, very narrative so there is a need to to promote such a narrative to incentivize such a narrative which gives importance to uh, peace which gives importance not to militarism so the uh, most important thing which i would like to highlight is being uh, uh, involved in the academia and uh, um, policy groups our work should be to try to create an ambience where positivity and peace is incentivized there should be the incentive to the positive things and the peace so i think uh, i i have taken this and uh, reconciliation and uh, dialogue uh, 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 aga you have asked about that so i'll say it's my uh, uh, dialogue is a you can say a broader frame A reconciliation you can say is a part of that broader frame of dialogue so reconciliation emerges from an enlightened understanding of things by uh, by by being in a dialogic process so both uh, dialogue and uh, reconciliation both are interrelated things and there are various scholars who have their Uh, emphasized upon the reconciliation thing, and uh, uh, in, in, in reconciliation, a reconciliation means if some conflict has happened, and suppose for example those who have been parties to this conflict have a, have 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 gone through some problem, so how to resolve those things? How to reconcile with the uh, uh, with the reality which emerged afterwards? So in reconciliation, a lot many things uh, is done sometimes. uh we talk about compensation to we talk about uh, 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 when it's the material loss about compensation when emotional loss we talk about uh, the truth and re reconciliation and, uh, commission is met so there are different mechanism through which it is it is uh, carried out and uh, uh, 
uh, if you you can uh, bezat can send me your mail or mail of everyone and some uh, material also i have to say bezat sorry i was traveling so i couldn't send that so some material pertaining to this also i'll i'll, I'll send you and mr raga if you can ask bezat to send me your mail i'll particularly send you material on reconciliation i hope these three questions i have been able to take and i hope it is not an answer all these things are not finally an answer because the uh, problem which uh, uh, you are confronting we are also going through the same uh, 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 same thing but uh, our tech uh, the tech from this uh, discussion should be that we need to be hopeful and we need to give due importance to the concept like dialogue because this is the only hope this is the only way through which positivity could be but we had otherwise things are going in a very negative direction i hope it answers some of thank your you. query thank you sir i got Yes, it's extremely clear. Clarity. Yeah, about uh, Ravi Dubey. Uh, sorry, Bezat. Yes. Ravi, Ravi, yeah, I got some uh, Ravi Dubey. There is this concept of negative peace. Uh, yes, uh, Ravi. Uh, the uh, John Galton. I, I didn't take the name of a number of scholars because uh, when I used to uh, study, I had been a student, and I particularly dislike remembering the name of. It. scholars so i was basically more interested in idea so yes this uh, concept of uh, uh, peace has been uh, very uh, nicely uh, documented by john galton who is considered to be and he is said to be uh, the uh, perpetual contender for nobel peace prize so every uh, every uh, time when nobel peace prize is announced uh, we hope that Uh, uh john galton will be one of the winner of the peace prize so galton has done a lot of work on peace and he talks about peace in terms of uh, uh the creation of a situation in which there will be the av availability of things to achieve the positive goals uh, for your life and uh, negative peace he terms that just the absence of war if war is not happening war is not happening for that matter in many parts of the world that doesn't mean that there is peace there is just the negative peace negative peace means there is absence of war but real peace is positive peace and that positive peace is that in which there is the possibility for the utilization of the resources for the attainment of the individual capacity of every one every people so this is the concept of peace Uh, i hope it's oh, okay ravi uh, there is another uh, question i think it is not just a comment the very spirit is required to be involved whenever there is any talk not just pen and paper yes of course the most important thing is the spirit right um Okay, sir. With regards to uh, the email, I have shared your email address with uh, the participants, and uh, you know anybody interested can uh, contact you. Uh, apart from that, if there's any reading material that you'd like to share uh, with the students, please uh, do it with me. I'll forward it to to them. Uh, so um, right. So with this, we come to the end of our session today. Thank you so much, Dr. Pepe uh, Indraza, for joining us for your time. Uh, and for this very insightful uh, presentation talk um it's uh, uh, and thank you participants for your questions and comments um thank you sir once again I'll thank you very much thank you thank you all